Hello everyone and welcome to another podcast episode. Now before we get into this, let's just talk about the couple of very exciting things that we've got going on at the moment. Now for the Jeremy and Dicker side, I've been booked by the Premiership Football Club Tottenham Hotspurs to go and speak with their staff who deal with the youth at the club. Now this is an amazing moment and actually by the time you listen to this podcast, that would have already happened. So you can go to my social media and find out what the outcome was. Now for the Something to Say organisation that I run and all of those social media platforms, we've attracted the attention of a private organisation who are potentially interested in helping us with funding. Now this would be a game changer for us because at the end of each month we're scrambling around looking for money to keep those platforms alive and if they can help us with that, that's just going to be an incredible moment, another incredible moment and it's a reason for us to feel optimistic and encouraged because because I don't want this to only be doom and gloom of the subject. I want there to be a balance because then we can stay the course and continue persisting forward. So thank you for supporting me. As always, jeremyindica.com, something to say official.com are the websites. Go check that out. Thank you so much. Okay, so I feel like I've come up to a crossroads with all of this work that I put out there and I'm trying to achieve. I feel very frustrated about it, actually. And I've gone and spoken to some of my close friends who follow this work closely uh, since I've been doing it for five years now. My goodness, that time has gone quickly. And I've also spoken to various colleagues, let's call them, Um, but also friends, I suppose, that I've got to know through doing this work and um, support me greatly. And this crossroads that I have come across is in relation to schools and the other work that I do. Now, let me explain a little bit about this, because I feel like I've got some big decisions to make. I feel like I've either got option A or option B that I must take, But I mustn't take the decision lightly um, because we have some aims and we have some goals here um, to get this subject on everybody's table, to get this subject in front of young people and be as creative as we can in doing that and really change the culture with the way that we talk about this. All massive, massive um, aims and missions that are truly encouraging and motivating and I enjoy trying to uh, advance um, and be better at, at what I do. Now, as you know, if you're following me on social media, I have been trying my best to push for schools. I do get bookings for schools every now and again. Mostly that's schools asking me to come and speak with their teachers and their staff, which is fine. In fact, it's excellent. And every time I present, I go away and I open up my social media the next day and I've got personal messages from people who have been in the audience saying that what I delivered was phenomenal and it was so different to any other training that they've ever had. I mean, one teacher once fed back to me saying she's been a teacher for 20 years and she's never been so engrossed in a training program or from what a speaker has been saying that have come to speak to them as a school, as she was when I spoke, which is great feedback, right? And I've managed to speak to some students in schools. I think three schools have brought me in to speak with their students, and and you should see the students. They're so they're so encouraged by when I tell my story and explain about speaking out and telling my friend for the first time and all this work I'm doing online. And you should see the boys, especially like. They're so engrossed in it and, and when they leave, they're fist pumping me saying, go go get it, mate. And and like I, just, I, I managed to turn a subject which usually they're rolling their eyes at because they've heard everything about consent and body awareness. They've had enough of it and I managed to get them interested in taking it seriously again. So that's the avenue that I want to push, right? So I want to push for more schools, more schools, more schools. And, and what's sad is my bookings this year I know it's only the start of the year, right? But uh, my calendar for this year is not as full as it was last year. Last year, I had so many bookings. I was doing eight or nine events or organizations or schools uh, per month. Uh, But this year, it's it's really not like that, which is so sad, by the way. It's so sad. I I would expect for it to um, only increase in this area. 
So one of the uh, reasons or drivers for me um, doing this podcast episode is because I recently had a cancellation um, from a grammar school in London. They booked me to speak with all of their students. So there was a thousand students and this was an all boys school. So a thousand boys I would have been going and speaking to from year seven to year 12. What an incredible uh, opportunity this this really was. And the head teacher that booked me, um, she was so keen. She was um, so enthusiastic and so encouraged. And the reason for that is because she's actually already seen me speak at another event. I spoke at a teacher training event um, last year and she came up to me afterwards and said, that is perfect for the boys at my school. She emailed me, we had an email conversation and she booked me for the whole day. Fantastic. Every time I'd email her, I sent her a little um, update email with, with some of my work and she'd reply back to me and everything was good. Now that um, uh, a booking was meant to be in January and um, I received the email from her a couple of weeks before the, the booking saying um, that unfortunately she's got to cancel. Uh, there's been a timetable clash and that there's no room to bring me in for the foreseeable future. And that was just it. It just felt, it felt like something was up. It was such a change from the 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 the, the, the vibe of conversation that we'd been having since I spoke at that teacher training, and she booked me, and we had organised all of this. It felt a little bit unusual, so I messaged back, um, and I said, "Of course, that's um, such a shame. Um, I, I believe I would have been able to inspire uh, the boys um, at your school," and I wrote asking, uh, just out of my curiosity, I said, uh, is, has there been any concerns um, with anybody at the school or, or or anything for, for for not for you to cancel, but for, for there to be like no rearrange? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, okay, there's a timetable clash, but usually you would have expected for her to have said, we're so sorry, there's a timetable clash, um, but w- uh, w- what's your availability in February or March etc but there was none of that and I didn't get a reply back from her and I was just thinking oh, what's happened something has gone wrong now has it been um, a concern from another teacher uh, about a variety of things you know um, and those things I believe when it comes to students are Schools are worried about how this subject could upset certain students or trigger certain students. But that just doesn't make sense, does it? Because they're probably the students that we're hoping after I leave will come forward and and, and talk about it. I also believe one of the complications that schools would face is p- potential backlash from parents who don't want this subject in front of uh, their, their their teenagers, their own children. Okay, um, and, and the third one I was thinking was that the school's so worried that they'll get so many disclosures after I leave that they haven't got the systems and procedures in place to deal with that. Now, I don't actually think it would be that one because from my experience of visiting schools now, they are on this. Like, it's we, it's something that for us to feel optimistic about. Like, that, they're really on this. They've got processes, systems, electronic logging systems. If if a child shows us oh, just, just so many great things, come on. To all the teachers, any teachers that are watching or listening to this on your podcast app, come on, I support you entirely. To all the schools and who, who, whoever organised those systems, I, I support it entirely. So I don't think it's the disclosures thing. I think maybe big backlash, a worry concern of backlash from parents yes um but also uh you know triggers is is a big thing nobody wants to trigger anybody um that's seen as a bad thing when why don't we look at it as a good thing possibly you could trigger some something inside somebody which leads them to take action which could be to go and speak to their teachers about something that they've got going on at home at this 
moment. <laughs> I mean, that's a positive, right? But anyway, the booking got cancelled. I spoke with um, friends about it because I was pretty down about it, you know. I was pretty down about it. What an opportunity missed. And, and um, I just felt like we had let down those students um, who, who would have heard my story. So I chatted with my mates about it. I chatted with a few other people about it. And I came to another conclusion um, that this could not be about schools' concerns, about triggers or disclosures or parents. This could also be something to do with the content that I post online, on my YouTube channel, on this podcast, um, and the topics that I try to open up and discuss. Because I know for sure that some of them are confronting those taboos. And some of them, for some of the audience, they'll they'll read those conversations that I'm trying to open and be like, oh, that's sensitive, or oh, that's pushing the boundary a little bit. Because that is what part of my work is about. Now, I don't know whether, like, like I may be making huge assumptions here, okay? Um, I, I really may be. But the cancellation from this school came two days after I released the podcast about pornography. Now, if you didn't see that, I believe it's like two or three podcasts ago. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just go to my homepage and check that out. Or, of course, if you're listening on your podcast app, you can just um, go to whatever uh, provider you're using and check that out. Um, and the title of the podcast was Has Teen Porn Taken It Too Far? Now, what I did was I reviewed a documentary that interviewed pornography actresses and uh, pornography directors who are creating content for the teen porn category, but they are setting these girls, not setting these girls up, they're dressing these girls with, with pigtails, holding teddy bears in little girls' bedrooms. It's quite clearly um, colourful bedrooms of, of little girls. And they admit that they're trying to get those girls to look as young as possible. And, and one of the directors um, joked about on the documentary saying if we could get them to look 12 that will get us loads of views because they were explaining that the younger they get to make those girls that the younger they make those girls look the more views they're getting because um young girls underage girls is uh is is hugely popular on on pornography websites like Pornhub but it's not illegal because these actresses are 18 years old and they're consenting and the directors are consenting they're all legal adults they're just posing as underage girls on the video so there's no rules or regulations or laws against this and it's it's just on the usual pornography websites and I just thought this was really something that uh, we should we should talk about. You know, it, yeah, uh, do we do we think that that kind of material um, is okay? You know, it's all consensual. Nobody's getting hurt. Um, or are we worried about the mostly men who are consuming that type of material and what that rabbit hole that may take them down? Interesting, right? I, I mean, I personally find that interesting. I don't. I, I'm going to guess that you know you f also find that discussion really interesting. You know, the use of pornography in particular with young teenage boys is a conversation that we should have. So anyway, I did the podcast, and um, whether you whether you saw that or not, uh, I, bel I, I I also have a I also have a, a a feeling in me that possibly either a teacher at that school or the head teacher has seen this and be like, we can't deal with him. Do you know what I mean? We we. You know, we're a school. We can't bring people in who push the boundaries. We can only bring people in that are squeaky clean. Like, like your brand, your brand and your persona and whatever you do online has to be squeaky clean for you to come into our school because we're not risking anything. Now, whether or not that grammar school has uh, gone through this thought process and that's one of the reasons why they cancelled me. And of course, I may be completely wrong here. Yeah, yeah I, I really may be. But it has got me thinking and um, it's got me thinking about how marketable I am to schools. 
And I think uh, when I open up the conversations of, of um, that podcast referring to the pornography situation or um, when I release podcasts about offenders and um, what we're going to do with offenders, how we're going to reach them before they commit the crime in the first place, all of those discussions which I know people feel heated about, it's not making me marketable for schools. They would rather just stick to the curriculum and do it in the classroom. They would just rather get um, a, an official trainer in or with with a with a PowerPoint slide and just get that in front of the kids so we can tick the box. You know, let's not push the boundaries. Like, and it's not helping me. Now, I start questioning myself because I wonder. Well, do I need to change that? Do I need to start censoring myself um, so that I can uh, be more marketable to schools? Like, it's a valid question. Now, now, why do I need to be so marketable for schools? There's a couple of reasons why. I want the school bookings. Schools is where I should be at. Schools in front of these teachers and these staff and the students is where I need to be at. It's like the prime position, right? It's the prime position. Imagine how many boys have gone through a sexual abuse situation out of that thousand at that grammar school you know at least 10 like at least 10 boys I'd be speaking to so I need to get into schools it's the place where I want to be but you know what (laughs) to be open with you it's also bookings are my main source of income this is another big driver for bookings it's my main source of income and 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 look for anybody that has a response inside of them that's like, it's not about the money, Jeremy. Well, you know what? A certain part of it has to be about the money because I quit my engineering career designing supercars for McLaren to embark on this. And this is my full-time thing. So I need to make some kind of wage out of it. You know what I mean? And one of the big challenges, in fact, one of the big questions for, from those that were close to me when I, when I quit my um, job at McLaren and left a very luxurious, comfortable lifestyle behind to embark on something that was very uncertain, was how are you going to make money out of this? Like, that was one of the big concerns, you know. And bookings is one of the ways that I can do that. You know, schools have budgets for speakers. So it's important. It's important for both of those reasons. But the problem is with censoring myself to achieve that is that one of the uh, uh, largest reasons why I embarked on this work was because when I started researching it online, one of the main things that I noticed was the censorship around this subject. Very few people, in fact, I've been in this field for five years and I still think the same very few people are willing to have the conversations that we need to have very few people are willing to consider what we're going to do to address the root of this problem what we're going to do with young teenage boys who are marinated in years of pornography before they've even kissed a girl pornography that is mostly about where the man uses the woman for his sexual gratification and it's nothing to do with her nobody wants to talk about sexual aggression in young boys and where that's coming from and where that's being influenced for like nobody wants to talk about any of that and I noticed that like as I started researching this before I had made the full commitment and that was one of the reasons that drove me to make the full commitment because I was like I think I couldn't have those conversations and I think I can bring them to the table in an interesting way and I hope you agree with me that that I'm managing to achieve that somewhat so it's like you know I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here I'm, I'm like stuck straight in the middle of option a and option b option a I start censoring myself and I only release podcasts, interviewing charities, doing great things and um, uh, inspirational and motivational things for survivors of sexual abuse, which I want to do too. And I, and I do do that, um, but only that. Anything that I feel like I want to talk about, that I feel I, I know is pushing the boundaries, because before I record those things, I know they're pushing the boundaries. I won't go there. 
and hopefully that will allow schools to book me, right? Hopefully that will. But then I'm kind of, you know what, I feel like if I did that, if I took option A, I feel like I'm selling out. I feel like I'm being, uh, um, I'm going against my true nature. I feel like uh, I'm not being true to myself. And I think we all agree that, you know, if you're not true to yourself when it comes to your uh, creativity or your your work or your mission or whatever you do, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to come up unstuck. Like, it, it, it's almost like a, a known um, a known thing in, 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 in the way that the world works. <laughs> you know what I mean? I will come unstuck if I if I take that road. Um, but if I take option B, which means I continue with the way that I'm going, with this YouTube channel, podcast, and all the content that I release, then I take that way forward and I try to work out a way of reaching these students that I can't get to through their school in a different way. Now, what way is that going to be? Um, that's going to be through video content online. <laughs> that's going to be me creating some kind of video series that I put a lot of time and effort into that relates to those teenagers and something that they'll share amongst themselves, something that's cool or, 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 or respected and that they're sharing on their WhatsApp groups or they're messaging each other on Instagram. Have you seen this? This is crazy, you know, that type of thing. Um, and, and I believe I could achieve that. I, I definitely would need a budget for that because I'd need to do some kind of good production with it but but anyway that's that's another conversation um but I think that could be achieved and then I can reach the students and not censor myself but but still it's like a decision needs to be made and I feel like I know which one I'm going for um because I have to stick with this and persist with this and eventually if if I t- if I do what I'm I'm thinking I'm going to, which is option B, um, eventually the schools will take notice. Like I, it's almost like I'm a bit angry at the schools. Do you know? Like I message like a hundred schools a month. I I, I I message so many schools, so many head teachers. You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe how many teachers are actually following me. Uh, our head teachers are following me on 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 LinkedIn, but nobody's nobody's booking. You know. And what's crazy with nobody booking is this. If you want to educate young people in schools about drugs, what's the best way to do that? I think we'll all agree that the best way to do that is to bring in somebody, a guest speaker, that has been addicted to drugs and has recovered and they're coming to tell their story about the horrors of being addicted to a drug. That is the best way to get those students to think twice about taking drugs in the future, 100%. And I think every parent would welcome that and agree with that and would say to the school, how quickly can you bring that person in, right? Now, let's take another subject area, gangs and knife crime. I know there's a very inspirational guy on LinkedIn called Paul Hannaford, and he is smashing it. He's one of my inspirations. He's speaking at schools three, four, five times a week. He talks about gangs and knife crime. Now, he was in a gang. He's been stabbed. He's been addicted to heroin. And he goes in and he talks about his story. Now, I've spoken to him a couple of times because I wanted advice on on, on the various things along this journey. And I asked him about, like, how he delivers his story. And he's like, I go straight in. And I've actually spoken to a couple of teachers that have had him in. and, And they're like, he is brutal. But he gets all of those kids understanding that that gang culture, that glorified gang culture, is not anything you want to get involved in. Drugs, knife crime. If you carry a knife, you're probably going to get... You know, it's it's like he, he gives it real. He gives it real. And I bet you all the parents are like, how quickly can you get him in? So we all agree, don't we, that to educate young people, teenage boys, teenage girls, about serious matters, that traditional classroom environment, traditional classroom techniques, they will do a little bit. But most students are bored uh, in those types of classrooms. But of course, we've got to do it. I'm not trying to shoot any teachers down. I'm never trying to do that. And I'm not trying to shoot the education system down either. But what you also need is you need a sprinkle of real life stories. We're all in agreement 
it's the real life stories that stick with these kids with that stick with these teenagers the real life stories are the ones that stick with us adults too but why won't you bring me in you bring the person in for drugs you bring the person in for knife crime you bring the person in for 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 whatever that be but when it comes to sexual abuse you don't want to bring no one in you don't want to bring no one in but why why is it like that why is everybody so scared around this topic and it's so crazy because it doesn't make sense because the three schools that I've spoken to students at they those those students that it's almost like they're more ready for this than 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 we are as adults so I do feel like there's a crossroads. I do feel like there's some big decisions for me to make here. And I'm going to continue thinking about them and talking about them. And I will make some adjustments. I definitely will make some adjustments. Maybe my approach on certain posts um, needs to be... Uh, uh, um, my technique or my style needs to evolve a little bit. Maybe this is a, a, a great... Uh, initiator for that you know because I know sometimes I can be a little bit aggressive (laughs) towards towards schools in my posts where I'm like why aren't you booking me do you know what I mean and and look look I also accept um that the answer to why are you not booking me could be that your the quality of your content isn't there yet like I, I I accept that if that's a reason. But with the testimonials that I've got and the reaction that I got every time I speak, my money wouldn't be on that being the reason, right? Um so I think uh, 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 the next level of evolution needs to come from me, um, which is beautiful and, and, and exciting. I think uh, this has been such a significant point in my head recently. Um, when I look at the, the the calendar bookings for for this month, um, and I I feel like it's going to invite some welcome change, um, but not the change that option A would initiate. Change that becomes more creative and more 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 exciting. And and, and I want to show these schools. I, I I'm eventually, you know, one of my goals is to have more bookings from schools that I, than I can handle. And then when I get to that stage, which I will get to that stage, right? Eventually I will get to that stage because eventually I will I will be able to capture the confidence of these schools. But step by step, that guy from the um, I spoke about Paul Hannaford. He's been doing this for like 10 years. So it's been a long process um, for him. And it will be a long process for me too. But I believe that um, I'm being held back by the taboo of the topic um, in comparison to other topics. That's that's really how I feel. So, so just to finish off, of course, um, I'm recording this on the 31st of January, um, it's Wednesday, and on Monday, the Monday coming up, 5th of January, I'm speaking at Tottenham Hotspur's Premiership Football Club, and this is what I mean, some people are really taking this on, what a, what an incredible thing, what an incredible thing to capture the attention of such a big, renowned organisation like that, and I'm speaking to their staff, um, and uh, that deal with the youth there at the club, and I'm going to be posting about this on social media. And so by the time this comes out, that would have all, all, all happened. And you will you will know what the what, what the outcome was. But I'm hoping that as I promote more bookings like this, other people can see that yeah, yeah, he he's some he's he's doing something pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Like he's doing something pretty unique, and that, that's what I was always about. So we keep moving forward, we keep evolving. This all started five years ago with an idea in my head that possibly something unique could be done and I believe it's being achieved. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you're engaging on YouTube, please go watch some more videos. Let's get this whole thing rolling. Let's kick these algorithms into gear because anything is possible. I truly believe it. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again for another episode. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, so I wonder how you feel now that you know what's in my head and the crossroads and big decisions that I need to make with all of this work. I know you're supporting me. I know you believe in me. I know you believe in all of this work too. It's so phenomenal. Sometimes people write to me and say they've been following for two, three, four years and they're engrossed in this journey and they're finding inspiration through it. And that's all I can really ask for, to be inspiring, motivating and finding a way forward with this topic. How can we communicate this topic in the best way to, to, for it to stand the biggest chance of getting on everybody's table? That is the mission and that is the problem that we need to solve and we can do it using creative endeavours. So thank you so much for the support. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I look forward to engaging with you on another one soon. Thank you.